Hey everyone, check out these LED strips. They run on main power, that is 120 volts AC, which means that the maximum voltage they can tolerate is around 170 volts. Now, if we want to control these LED strips with a microcontroller, we need a component that can switch that high voltage because the microcontroller itself can't handle or switch such a high voltage. There are many components for this, some you might be familiar with. Things like like uh, relays, triax, transistors, or IGBTs. Each of these components has its own characteristics, pros and cons. I have previously released a video about different electronic switches where I talked about these components and where to use each one and where not to use each one. I'll put the link to that video in the description of this video. So if you need it, you can go and watch it after this one. If you have seen that video, you will know that these LED strips can easily be switched using a triac, that is, we take a low voltage command from a microcontroller and use that low voltage command to switch the high voltage AC power on and off. This circuit is the simplest way to use a triac like this one to switch an AC load. If we set up this circuit correctly, by pressing this button which works with 3.3 volts, I can easily turn any AC load on and off including these LED strips or these incandescent lamps. In this experiment, I'm gonna use BT136 triac switch with this pinout and MOC3021 opto triac with this pinout. Look here, when I press the button, this LED strip turns on, and when I take my hand off of the button, the strip turns off. Technically, there is no problem, and these strips are perfectly turned on and off by a Turiac. But this isn't what I want, because here we have a big problem called flicker. This flickering light, which is uh, clearly visible in the video, makes the video quality very low. And this flickering is clearly visible in the video. On the other hand, this flickering, although it is not visible to the human eye and only bothers us in the camera when filming or taking pictures, indirectly affects the eye and brain and causes eye fatigue and headaches. If we can eliminate this flicker, it will be great. First, we need to see what causes this flicker and then see how we can eliminate it. The waveform of main power, or in general, any type of alternative voltage is sinusoidal, something like this. When we connect an electrical load such as LED strip or an LED lamp or a regular lamp to the main voltage, this sinusoidal waveform also affects the light produced by the lamp and just like the waveform, the light level goes up and down which may not be visible to human eye but it really exists. If you need to eliminate the flicker, you have to eliminate the sinusoidal nature of the voltage to eliminate the flicker in the lamp. In fact, 
we need to convert the alternative voltage with direct voltage. Good news is that there is a very simple way to do that, using a diode bridge and a filter capacitor. We can use a diode bridge after the triac and then connect the output of the diode bridge to a filter capacitor to convert the output voltage into a smooth and clean direct voltage. By doing this, the flicker of the output light is eliminated or greatly reduced. For this, I use a diode bridge with a part number KBP310 which has the voltage and current rating I need and I choose a 500 volt 82 microfarad capacitor as the filter. Look here, this circuit is much better than the previous circuit and we have almost no flicker. If you look carefully, you will see that the flicker has been greatly reduced, but there is still some flicker in the output light, which is negligible and it's only visible on the oscilloscope. I believe complete elimination of flicker with this method is not possible and whatever we do, some flicker remains on the output light. But to reduce the flicker even more, we need to increase the capacitance of the filter capacitor or reduce the number of strips in the output. Both of these will reduce the flicker in the output light. Conversely, if we reduce the capacitance of the filter capacitor or increase the number of strips in the output, the flicker will also increase. I have used the same circuit in the first version of the project. By the way, I forgot to mention that this video that you are watching right now is part 3 of the 10 channel flicker free lighting system project with infrared remote controller and this part is dedicated to the switching section of the channels and flicker elimination. If you haven't seen the previous parts, please go back and watch the previous parts right now and then come and continue this video. As I said, the circuit has several flaws. The main flaw is that when I turn off the switch, the LEDs turn off with the delay, meaning their light first dims and gradually becomes dimmer and dimmer until they turn off completely. The reason for this is the presence of the filter capacitor in the output. Because when we release the button, although the triac is turned off, the capacitor is still charged and we have to wait until the capacitor still has a voltage to keep the LEDs on until the strip is completely turned off. If we want to fix this problem, meaning the LEDs turn off completely as soon as they receive the off command, we need to place the switch after capacitor. Since our voltage after the capacitor is DC, we need to use a DC switch. The triac was placed before the diode bridge because it was an AC switch. Now we need to use a DC switch. DC switches come in different types. We can use, for example, a relay or a transistor or an IGBT to switch the DC load like these LED strips. In the second version of the 10 channel lighting system, I used an IGBT to switch the DC load of the LED strips. This is the circuit I used to switch the LED strips. If you look closely, you can see that I used an IGBT here with the part number 30G124. If I apply a voltage more than 4 volts to the gate pin of this IGBT here, the IGBT turns on and passes the voltage, negative voltage to the strips. Since the positive voltage is already connected to the strips permanently, the strips uh, turn on with this. A voltage lower than 4 volts also turns the IGBT off and as a result the strips turn off. Since I did this project 
with an STM32 microcontroller and this microcontroller works with a 3.3 volts I can't directly supply the appropriate voltage for the gate pin of this IGBT here through the pins of microcontrollers so I need to design a circuit to drive the gate pin of this IGBT for this the easiest way is to use a regular transistor I need to use another transistor to switch the voltage of the gate pin of this IGBT I pulled up the gate pin of this IGBT with this 10 uh, kilo ohm resistor so that when the C945 transistor is off, it delivers 9 volts to the gate pin of this IGBT. And when this transistor is on, it pulls down the voltage of the gate pin of the IGBT down to zero and turns off the IGBT. So with this circuit, if I apply 3.3 volts to the uh, point A, it will turn on the tra this transistor and makes the voltage of the gate pin of this IGBT zero and as a result the IGBT will turn off and turn off the strip and vice versa by applying voltage uh, zero zero volts to the point A uh, this transistor turns off and by turning this transistor off this pull up resistor can rise the voltage of the gate pin of this IGBT up to 9 volts and turn on the IGBT. In this case, the IGBT can deliver negative voltage to S strips and as a result, the S strips turn on. So, in total, if you apply 0 volts to point A, you will turn on the S strips and by applying 3.3 volts to point A, you will turn off the S strips. Here you may wonder why I used an IGBT with the part number 30G124 to switch the strips. You may want to know why this exact part number 30G124 was chosen. There are a few points to consider when choosing the right IGBT to switch a particular load which I want to tell you. The first point is that we need to choose an IGBT that can handle the desired voltage and be able to switch it. The voltage we have at the output is a maximum of 330 volts and this IGBT can handle and switch up to 430 volts. So we have no problem with this. The next point is that this IGBT should be able to switch the current required for the strips. Since this IGBT according to its data sheet can switch up to 2 200 amperes and here we need a maximum of 500 milliamperes of current for the strips this IGBT is capable for switching our desired load from current point of view capable right capable I would say that it is way more than we need it can switch much more current than we require in fact this means that this IGBT has a lot more power than the strips needs that is, the capabilities of this IGBT are being wasted here. So, why did I use this part number when there are other part numbers that are cheaper and smaller and can switch the same load? The main reason is that I had this part number in my workshop and I don't want to buy a new component. So, I used them and I am very happy with them. You can use a different part number in your project that is cheaper, smaller and available to you. Also, many of you may ask whether a small component like this IGBT can really switch up to 200 amperes because it really doesn't look like it has that kind of power. For example, the pins of this component don't seem they can handle 200 amperes. 200 amperes is really a lot. But on the other hand, since it is written in the datasheet that it can handle up to 200 amperes, we have to accept it. But many people don't really believe this number. In one of my previous videos, I talked about it. There is a link to that video in the description section. Anyway, let's move on from this topic and go to the final point we need to talk about, filter capacitors. In this circuit where we have switched the LED strips with the Turiac, we had a filter capacitor in the output. But here in the circuit that I draw with the IGBT, no capacitor is existed. The reason is that I assume that the voltage we have here is a clean and smooth DC voltage that has already passed through one or more filter capacitors. In other words, in this circuit design, we have separated the rectifier and filter circuit from the switching circuit. 
It is not like this circuit where the switching and rectifier circuit are combined. Assuming that we have a DC voltage here, so I put this circuit aside and draw and explain the capacitor bank and rectifier circuit for you so that you will have no problem here. Here we need several capacitors, the number of which depends on your design. In this version of the device, I used 16 capacitors, each with 82 microfarad capacity. Also, I used a BTA16 Triac that can switch up to 16 amperes to switch the AC voltage on or off to the rectifier circuit, and I gave the control of this Triac to the microcontroller. Microcontroller can turn this Triac on or off by applying voltage to point B here. When this track turns on, it connects the AC voltage to the input of the rectifier circuit. After being rectified, it enters the filter capacitors and here our voltage becomes smooth. We use this point in the IGBT circuit as the positive voltage. With all these capacitors, the flicker we will have in the output light will probably be very small. There are a few key points missing here that I need to mention. The first point is that we must use discharge resistors in parallel with the capacitor bank so that when the circuit is completely off, the capacitors are gradually discharged because if these capacitors are not discharged, they may create danger for people because of their high voltage. The next point is that the capacitance of these capacitors is very high. So when we turn on the true react to charge the capacitors, they draw a very high inrush current at the first moment of charging. This inrush current, which is very high, can damage the capacitors themselves and it can also damage the story arc or this flight bridge or other components. To prevent this inrush current, we can use a component in the charging pass of the capacitors that acts like a brake and prevents the inrush current. This component is called an NTC which I placed before the diode bridge on the AC side. I could have placed this NTC on the DC side after the diode bridge as well, but due to some points I decided to place it on the AC side. I have previously made a video about how the NTC works and why and how it prevents the inrush current. I'll put the link to that video in the description of this video, so if you like you can go and watch that video as well. Well, my friend, here we come to the end of the part 3 of 10 channel lighting system project. In this video, we analyzed the switching circuit used in the project and learned how to create and use a capacitor bank to eliminate flicker. In the next videos, we are going to examine other parts of the project together. So, don't miss the next videos. Thank you for watching me and staying with me until here. If you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now is the best time to click the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. And also activate the notification bell so that you will be notified on the next videos. Until the next video, take care of yourself and have a good one.